Hello everybody. This animation session is for the S4 Ibn Zor University students. Introduction to Literature Hello. Dear students, our focus today is on Wendy Wasserdine's play Tender Offer. Our purpose is to have an overview of the play. Or, said more clearly, to revise the play by focusing on its major themes and some of the techniques used to convey its hidden messages. So, any volunteer? Yes, sir. The play is one of the literary works that have focused on human reality and the moral concerns that control relationships. This play is a mold of emotions and feelings that feature the dialogue between Lisa and her father Paul. It seems to us that this kind of relationship is a fragile one. That needs a lot of effort to be successful. The different perspectives that each one of them has make the chances of reconciliation weak. Lisa is being influenced by media and school. However, Paul establishes his interests on business. The real reason of having such a relationship is the father's capitalist notions that separate him from his daughter and make of him an irresponsible father. How does the text show the reasons of his irresponsibility? Well, the first reason in the text, which makes Paul an irresponsible father, are the perspective and values he adopts in his life, that are fed by capitalist ideology. And an illusory American dream. Business, is awarded a great value, in the lives of many people compared to significant aspects of life. Paul loses the sense of responsibility. As a result of giving too much interest to business, here. Responsibility doesn't mean providing material needs, as it is providing care and attention, as any responsible father does. That's a good explanation. But, how is Lisa to discover that? Well, Lisa has been able to capture the real image of her father particularly. After missing her recital because of his business, it seems that he didn't give her enough care as a responsible father, who is supposed to support and encourage his daughter in her recital or any other event. This lack of responsibility pushes Lisa to avoid her father, as long as she spends most of her time far from him. Thanks for answering the question. Is there any sense of responsibility explained in the play? Yes, sir, there is. Concerning the sense of responsibility, it bears pointing to other elements that impact Lisa's character in the play. Apparently, she has been influenced by media's ideologies and school. School where she spends most of her time with a teacher and fellows and makes her sound like an aggressive girl, but of course she isn't. Lisa uses media to call her father's attention to some important issues. For example, she says, it was Pix Channel 11. The father was crying about his daughter. She also provokes him using her teacher, when she wants him to be responsible. She said, Miss Judy says, it's not professional to leave things. This explains to us, how Lisa is mature despite her age, when she draws her father's attention to the importance of responsibility. Eventually, this lack of responsibility is emblematic of the parent. Child lack of communication. If Paul supported his daughter morally, as any responsible father does, and not give too much attention to business, there would be an intimate relationship that is based on responsibility and appreciation. Thank you. Another student to contribute something? Me, sir. I want to talk about binary oppositions that are abundant in the play and the art versus business which remains a major dichotomy since it is the basis of the conflict. Although the relationship between the characters is a father, daughter one, both of them live in totally different worlds, as a result they have different values, priorities and languages. Quite insightful. Could you please explain more? Sure, well, Lisa is a nine-year-old girl, yet she possesses features beyond her age. She's professional and responsible as is shown by her refusing to go home, before she finds the leg warmers. These traits are learned from Miss Judy, which indicates her significance in Lisa's life. She's also hardworking and serious about her dance, 
since she was placed second in the dance recital. Lisa's nickname is Tiger, also refers to her strong character and ambition. This strong personality is what has stopped her from asking Paul why he didn't show up. And instead she says that Miss Judy wants to know why he was late. As a dignified character, her fear of looking weak forces her not to acknowledge that she needs her father there. How about Paul? How is he depicted? Well, Paul, on the other hand, is depicted as a typical American businessman. He seems to have his priorities already figured out, work comes first then family duties, and money is prioritized over human connection. Paul is merely a reflection of traditional American values where the most important facet of life is making money, and even if this objective requires sacrificing his relationship with his daughter, then it is a price he is willing to pay. What you're saying makes perfect sense. Does that mean that Paul has failed as a father? No. It doesn't mean that Paul has failed. Obviously he loves his daughter. However, in his mind, he's facing a dilemma where he either focuses on his work to ensure his daughter's future, or he attends her dance recitals and be more involved in her life, which can lead him to be distracted and risk his job. To Paul, dance justify the means, but through that pursuit of the future we miss the present and lose count of what is really important. Does it matter if Lisa is provided for if the cost is her relationship with her father? The American dream isn't exclusive to the USA. And working hard to attain success is the case in every country. However, what is exclusive to the American mentality in particular is the willingness to sacrifice relationships with those who matter in order to attain that success. And its writer is criticizing in the play. As you stated at the beginning, we can also evaluate the play at the level of language. Sure. As has been established, each character is from a different world, and from within those differences conflict arose. The most obvious aspect is the use of language. Paul uses words like procrastinating and maudlin while talking to a nine-year-old, indicating that he doesn't know the proper language suitable for children. Lisa does the same when she refers to individuals whom Paul doesn't know like Miss Judy, as well as mentioning TV shows. Each character speaks its own language which makes mutual understanding hard to achieve. The whole play is a battle of wit between Lisa and Paul, where every character is trying to establish control. And by the end, we get a clear look at how business for Paul is at the center of his life. Since the only way he deems fit to reconcile with his daughter, is by negotiating with her using the language he knows, business language. Then what do you think is the message of the play? When Paul was asked what he thinks about when he's quiet, he says he thinks of a lot of things and among them is how he is going to pay for Lisa's graduate school. This answer seems normal, rather predictable for a businessman whose job is to anticipate and prepare for future problems. But what's interesting here is Lisa's answer to the same question, do you ever look out your window at the clouds and try to see which kinds of shape they are? Like one time. Honest, I saw the head of Walter Cronkite in a flower vase. Although the conflict of art and business is apparent through character values, mentality and the language they use, an important distinction between the two is living the moment versus focusing on the future. And this piece of dialogue here not only crystallizes this distinction, but through Paul's answer we know that the art element is crowned as victorious in this battle. Good. So... Anybody to talk about symbolism in the play? Yes, me, sir. The play Tender Offer is a one-act play that tells about the relationship between a father and a daughter. It has discussed many themes that were featured throughout the use of symbolism. An example of that can be seen through the use of leg warmers. This item conveys the idea of warmth, care and affection, which are all things that Lisa craves for and needs from her father, Paul. At the beginning of the play, we learn that Paul misses the dance recital of his daughter Lisa. When he arrives to pick her up and take her back home, she refuses under the pretext that her leg warmers are missing, and that she won't leave without them. An exchange of words and arguments occurs between the two, and Lisa never actually tries to look for her leg warmers. 
Has the use of the leg warmers helped convey Lisa's message then? Yes. After a while, Lisa seems to have gotten her point across. Paul somewhat realizes now what his daughter needs, his love and attention. That's when she finally says I think I found my leg warmers. The use of leg warmers also shows that there is a state of emergency. Lisa doesn't want to leave until she finds her leg warmers, which can be figuratively translated into her not wanting to leave until she finishes her conversation with her father and finally getting the fatherly love that she has always longed for. This also shows how brilliant this little girl is, how she uses one item to express her hidden feelings that she couldn't utter out loud. Interesting. Is there another symbol used in the play? Yes, there is. An obvious symbol used in the play is tender offer. As perceived throughout the conversation between Paul and Lisa, the little girl is trying to confront her father to show him that what he's doing is wrong and what she needs from him, all while trying to stall and buy more time to talk. The father on the other hand, is urging his daughter to stop procrastinating, so they can go back home. And, at the same time, he's trying to avoid confrontation at all costs. This interchange between the two has continued without coming to a definite solution. That's when Paul makes Lisa a tender offer. Basically promising to meet her halfway in order to find common ground. And create a closer bond between them. This seems to break the boundaries that have separated each one from the other. So that they may move from their world to the other person's world. And close the gap in communication that has been present throughout the play, and which finally results in their singing and dancing to end the show happily. Okay, dear students, let's move on to another theme in the play. Could you speak about how, according to the play, other institutions than that represented by the family, intervene in the child's education? Tender Offer is a unique play. It was written based on general ideas and themes. These themes were the center of the story, they shaped it and gave it controversy. Great. Could you please explain more? The father's absence has left a vacancy in Lisa's life, which opened the space for individuals and institutions to fill the gap. The most notable institution is TV. Lisa keeps referring to TV shows like Love, Sydney. Live at Five in the show where a man cried because he missed his daughter. Her vast knowledge of these TV shows indicates the huge influence of TV. In Lisa's case, TV has formed a link between the so-called imaginary and the real. It serves as a high-powered form of communication which the little girl lacks with her father. TV shows help her realize certain things, realize relationships, especially the father-daughter relationship. It gave her confidence, determination, and critical thinking. It simply helped in developing her knowledge. Far more than that. Lisa was able to use TV outside of its entertainment perspective as a mechanism to press the father. The story shows dangerous changes that have affected one's traditional worldview. In fact, the roles switch and the more power television gains, the more control the father will lose. And when Lisa deems her father irrelevant to her life, there is no going back. Is there another institution with the same role? Yes. The school. It is very important. It gives people the building blocks needed to do various things. To critically analyze, read, perform mathematical functions, and to write. Without these building blocks, people would not understand some of the necessary things in everyday life. This is the case with Lisa. These building blocks have enabled her to recognize and realize numerous things without the help or presence of her father. Norms and values such as holding a promise, being on time and managing priorities. Lisa acquired them mostly from her teachers, especially Miss Judy. It is safe to say that the school has replaced the father figure in Lisa's life. Represented by Miss Judy, school has taught the little girl so many things, she was even able to teach them back to her father. Also, there is the institution of business which shows more of the side of the father. 
to thrive in such an institution your principals should most likely contract with what the other institutions value.